Hey everyone, and welcome to another AutoVio Auto Evolution video. In today's video we take a look at the groundbreaking Dodge Viper. 1991 saw the release of a great American sports car the Dodge Viper. During the time of manufacturing, no other company was offering a roadster with such horsepower. Even the Corvette was left behind. Chrysler considered ending production of the Viper because of serious financial problems, but on September 14, 2010, the then chief executive Sergio Marchione announced and previewed a new model of the Viper for 2012. In 2014, the Viper was named number 10 on the most American cars list. That means 75% or more of its parts are manufactured in the US. The Viper was eventually discontinued in 2017 after being in production for 26 iconic years. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be notified when a new Evolution video is released. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. 3, 2, 1, let's go. Viper RT10 Dodge Viper is one of the most famous cars in the world, with numerous appearances in movies, TV shows and video games plus a lot of variations of cars based on its original model. The first-generation Dodge Viper RT10 arrived in 1991 and proved to be a bit tricky to drive at high speeds than first expected, especially due to its high-performance engine which was capable of developing a maximum power of 400 horsepower. Top speed was rated at about 180 miles per hour while the 0 to 60 could be done in approximately 4.6 seconds. Viper RT10 Phase 2 SR the 1996 RT10 could be referred to as a second-generation Viper. It features a host of upgrades over earlier Vipers. Much of the changes came to the RT10 with the addition of a new building specifically made for combined GTS and RT10 production. Every Viper built after 1996 was manufactured there. A main difference to the 1996 Viper was the absence of side exhausts. They were replaced with two standard exhausts exiting the rear. The classic three-spoke wheels were also gone and replaced with five-spoke counterparts in polished aluminum, white or yellow. Inside, the cabin remained largely unchanged, but a removable roof was standard as was sliding plastic panels for the windows. Underneath, the chassis was stiffened, suspension geometry revised and a more robust rear differential was installed. Viper GTS in 1996 Dodge introduced the second generation of the Viper, and it offered it into a coupe shape that added more practicality without spoiling the performance. The Viper was the car that brought back the Dodge brand on the car magazine's front pages. Thanks to it, Chrysler ended the Corvette domination as the American fastest sports car and started a new car culture. It was a true daily driver supercar in the coupe form, just with a truck engine at the front. Dodge stated that the car was built around the engine which might be true since the new V10 engine was huge, pumping out about 450 horsepower. The new V10 was cast by Lamborghini, which at that time belonged to Chrysler, and was paired to a six-speed manual. Viper GT2 In 1997, Dodge won the FIA GT2 championship and did it again in 1998, so the carmaker decided that it could build a special street version of the winning car, the 1999 Viper GT2. Whether Dodge dropped a V10 engine under the hood of a sports car or built an oversized go-kart around that power plant, the result was magnificent. The result was a rocket car for its times, and the Viper remained in the motorsport history as the David that defeated the Porsche Goliath on its game. While Dodge made the exterior resemble the race car version, the interior looked more civilized, at the midway between the race and the street version. A five-point harness was fitted as standard. Dodge squeezed more power and torque from the massive 8.0-liter engine with a whopping 10 horsepower increase. Thus, it resulted in the quickest Viper from its times. Viper ACR Dodge made a special version for the Viper in 1999 and named it ACR after the American Club Racing and carried over some GT2 technologies. The carmaker paid homage to the Viper GTS or World Champion FIA GT2 race car with the ACR Special Edition. It turned it and enhanced its racing abilities. This was so owners could use it on race weekends. Even though it was not a racing car, the technologies used made it as close as possible and still keep the car road legal. Dodge removed everything it could to make the car lighter. Gone were the AC unit, the stereo, and the speakers. And that shaved about 60 pounds from the total car's weight. Apart from the fog lights, which were not available, 
The AC and the stereo were on the options list so the driver wouldn't sweat too much on the track. SRT10 Roads During Coupe Dodge introduced the third generation of the Viper in 2002 in the Roadster version and in the following year, it came with the Coupe version. Ralph Scheele designed the Coupe based on the Roadster created by Osamu Shikato in 1999. While it was an important step ahead of the original design, it remained the same aggressive looking Coupe with a long hood and a bubbled roof. Its headlights received a triangular shape that resembled the eyes of a snake. In the back, the lip spoiler on the liftgate produced more emotions than downforce. The 2003 Viper came with a better braking system and featured ABS. Under the hood, the carmaker installed an 8.3-liter V10 engine paired to a standard 6-speed manual gearbox. Viper SRT10 Roadster and Coupe Dodge introduced the fourth gen of its monstrous supercar Viper in 2007 as a 2008 model year and showed a meaner, aggressive look. With a design that left no room for errors, the Viper was already a feared competitor on the tracks, even by the best European supercars from that era. In 2007, Dodge presented the fourth Viper generation in both Coupe and Roadster models. The Coupe sported the same two bumps on the roof to provide more headroom for its occupants, especially when they wore helmets. At the front, the new angular headlights and the six vents on the hood were an unmistakable feature for the 2007 model. One of the Viper's key features was the side-mounted exhausts, which made an impressive noise. The fourth-gen Viper featured an upgraded V10 engine that punched out 600 horsepower. As a concession, the carmaker installed ABS on the vehicle, but there was no stability control or traction control on it. Everything was on the driver. Viper ACR The ACR made a comeback to the Viper lineup after the 2008 model year. Its upgrades were more drastic than the original, including street-legal racing tires, two-piece brake rotors, adjustable suspension, and significant aerodynamic enhancements that included a front splitter, canards, and a carbon fiber adjustable rear wing. Power to this ACR was unchanged from the SRT10 engine. SRT Viper The Dodge Viper released in 2012 at the New York Auto Show and was the fifth generation of the model. The new generation returned with a new design and a new interior. Although it used the same 8.4-liter V10 hand-assembled engine and had the same chassis from the previous year, they were both improved and upgraded. The engine output increased with 40 horsepower and the chassis had a two-mode damper system. The engine produced 640 horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque. The car could sprint from 0 to 60 in just 3.7 seconds. The engineers managed to reduce the car's weight by 100 pounds compared to its predecessor, by reworking several areas of the chassis. Viper ACR The 2016 Dodge Viper ACR came installed with an all-new aerodynamic body kit made from carbon fiber, that included a new front splitter and a fixed carbon fiber rear wing, altogether producing a total of 1,500 pounds of downforce at corners. The 8.4 liters V10 generated the same power output of 645 horsepower. The brake discs and calipers built specifically for the car by Brembo. The discs were now carbon ceramic, a first for the Viper series. The new suspension system was manufactured by Bilstein, which has 10 settings for rebound and compression tuning for the dampers. The ACR Extreme Aero package is the same package used to help the car break a total of 14 different track lap records. The package included the addition of a removable extended front splitter extension, a new adjustable dual element rear wing, four dive planes, six removable diffuser strakes, removable brake ducts, and removable hood louvers, and if removed, will reveal a hood gap. This helped the car produce an extra 500 pounds of downforce at corners. The top speed was reduced at 177 miles per hour because of the massive downforce produced by the car. At that top speed, the car produces 1,763 pounds of downforce, the most of any production car. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through time, please like and subscribe for more auto evolutions coming up.